In this video, I'm going to go over 4.6 homework part 3, um, six problems with one being of each trig function. Um, starting with number one here, okay. when we look at the equation, the first thing I would do is come up with the period and the values of each key point. So knowing that the period for all the trig functions except for tangent and cotangent, this is going to be either 2 pi over b or 360 over b. Here, because this is cosecant, I did 360 over b, which gave me a period of 1080 degrees, with key points being at every 270 degrees. Then I would go to find my starting position. This is the start of the curve that we're looking for, of the shape of that graph. Um, so what I did here is I'm going to take whatever's inside the parentheses and set that equal to zero. Okay. When we solve for theta here, we get negative 180, which is going to be our vertical asymptote. And then to find each of the other five key points, I'm just adding this 270 to find those values here. Okay. And then following the shape of a cosecant graph, we know it starts with a vertical asymptote. The middle is a vertical asymptote, and the last one is also a vertical asymptote. Um, I think on the notes I put this as a min and this as a max. Um, so you can write it like that if you want to. I just put the values in here knowing that uh, the center of our graph is going to be down at negative 1. And then this 1 half is, means that it, that is basically our amplitude. That's how far away from the middle this point is going to be. And same thing here. Okay. And then what I did here was I just did another um, couple points here to the right um, or to the left. Doesn't really matter here. Um, I went up by 90 each time. Um, I understand some of the problems later on. It was hard to come up with a value to go up by. So I just put the five key points on there. Uh, when I give you your quiz, I'll make sure that they are easier values to do. Something like this isn't too difficult, but some of the ones later on are... Um, difficult to come up with those values. So you'll see as we go through it, I just kind of put the five key points on there. Um, for number two here, this is a cosine graph. So again, we're using 360. Okay, we have to be comfortable with this being in degrees and also radians. Um, this is degrees here. We have the 60, I think it told you in the directions as well um, to do it in degrees. So I do 360 divided by 1 4, 360 over B to get this as my period and divide the period by four to come up with the value to go up by each key point. And then again, taking whatever's in the parentheses, setting it equal to zero to find our starting point. Okay. And we get that that is gonna be 240 when we solve for theta. And thinking about our cosine, that is going to be a max, the start point, right? Thinking of our curve being this here, starting at a max, coming down, and then finishing at the max. I added 360 each time to find my other key points. This plus 1 here tells me that the center of my graph is going to be up here at 1, which means that when I go up, oh, I did that wrong. And I did that wrong, so that one's going to be up here at 5. So I'm not mistake. All right, those max points are going to be up here at 5. Okay. Because it is four higher than the middle. Okay, that's a mistake here. Right. And the min is going to be four less than the middle, so down here at negative three. Right. I'll fix that before I send it out to you. Right. So just knowing the shape of our cosine graph, knowing it goes max, middle, min, middle, max. All right, moving forward, number three here. Okay, this is a tangent graph. So when we do the period, we want to do pi over b, but because we're in degrees, 180 over b. Okay. If we did 360 over b, that's not the period of a tangent function. We have to know that the period of tangent and cotangent are pi over b or 180 over b. So when we find our period here, we get 90. Okay. And our key points, if we divide 90 by 4, we get this 22.5. This is what's going to make it difficult to come up with the values here um, on our x-axis. Okay. Um, and here, the start of our graph, okay, 
we're taking whatever's inside of these parentheses but here we know that our tangent function is going to start at negative 90 or negative pi over 2 and then when I solve for theta I get negative 75 that is where our graph is going to start with a vertical asymptote if I add 22.5 each time I get these five other points so I know I have a vertical asymptote at the beginning and the end here I just put my five key points in here. I understand this doesn't go up by an exact value each time. Um, that's okay if you just put it like this. Um, if you tried to do that, um, I don't even know what number you would go up by there. Maybe negative 7.5. I'm not sure. And then when we go to come up with these other three points, okay, the center of our graph is going to be up here at 1. Okay, so this center point is up at 1. And then knowing this shape here, the amplitude is going to tell us how far away vertically this point is from the middle. And it is one half away. That's how I came up with this one half value. Same thing with this one. This one's going up, so it is one half more than our middle value. Now number four, this is a sine graph. Okay, when we come up with the period of this graph, sine is 2 pi over b, 2 pi over 3 here. And dividing that by 4, we come up with our key points at every pi over 6. And we can see here that I went up by pi over 6 each time. And again, I just put the values down here. Um, you could have gone up by pi over 18 each time. I didn't do that. Um, so these aren't going up by the same value. That is okay here. As you can see, I just put one value on the outside of each just to show that this shape is going to continue. Moving forward to the last two, um, number five, I have a secant graph. Right. So knowing the shape of our secant graph, knowing that it starts um, with that min point, then a vertical asymptote, max point, vertical asymptote, and again, another min. Um, coming up with the period again, two pi over B, and then dividing that period by four. When we find our starting point here, it starts at negative pi over 12. Right. And then I just add 3 pi over 2 each time. These are also hard values to use. Um, so you might have gone up by different values here. I just put the key points. This 2 is telling me that the center of our graph is up here at 2. And because our amplitude is 1, I know that this is going to be 1 above the center 2 and 1 below the center of 2. Again, I just added a few... Um, more values on each side to show that that graph continues. And then the last one here, number six, knowing that our cotangent graph is this shape here, right? when we come up with our period, pi over b, our b value is just one, so just pi, and then our key points are at every pi over four. Coming up with our starting point, okay, the cotangent graph starts at zero, so when we subtract four pi over three, we get this vertical asymptote, and um, then we keep adding pi over 4 to get these other points here. Um, the center of our graph is going to be down at negative 2 because it goes down by 2 because of this d value. And then because our amplitude is 1, I know that these points are going to be 1 above the middle and 1 below the middle. Again, I put another point on here that's going to continue to do that shape over and over. Um, just to show that it does that.